Mr. Herta, uh, I've expressed some concerns about um, the SE 2020 pipeline and not flowing as, as quickly as it could be. Um, I've got a couple parts of the question surrounding SE 2020. Uh, I've heard and I'd like you to comment on whether um, right now it's not new work that is being assigned, but existing work that is simply being brought under SE 2020 uh, from other contracts. And uh, can you uh, shed some light on when we can expect more dollars and tasks to be flowing through the pipeline? Uh, any reasons for the slow start and uh, what, what you're doing to help address this? Thank you, Mr. Lobiondo. Yes, as you know, SC 2020 is a contract vehicle that en enables the FAA to contract with the private sector on specific task orders associated with the deployment and delivery of NextGen. Over the past year, since the award of SC 2020, we have processed about 144 task orders, and that totals close to $400 million in, in investment that has been run through that task vehicle. That is about half of our FY11 enacted capital budget. And as I talked about in my testimony, this partnership with the private sector is very important. I think that um, we would all like to maximize the level of private participation in the development of this because it's a force multiplier for us. It enables us to um, move things as quickly as we possibly can. I think that there is concern that is expressed on the part of some contractors that we need to be doing more, that there are important things that uh, can be done. I think it's important to balance that, though, against the overall uh, challenge that we have to ensure that all of the work is, is fully integrated as we are developing various parts of an extremely complex system. And uh, what we are doing is ensuring that that level of integration is there so as to maximize the, uh, the benefit and to ensure that we don't have disconnects as programs get developed by different contractors. Would we like to do more and would we like to do it more quickly? Absolutely. But our overriding challenge is to ensure that we do it right. Um, okay. Um, you, you mentioned that the FAA just accomplished a realignment, uh, which is supposed to help next gen along. Could you, uh, could you elaborate a little bit on how specifically these changes will help the FAA deliver next gen? Two major things that we did associated with our realignment were uh, relate to the next gen program office itself, and then the second relates to a program management function, how we deliver complex technology programs. Taking first the next gen program office. Previously, it was housed within the air traffic organization, which reflects the fact that fundamentally what we're redeveloping is an air traffic system. But concern had been expressed by members in industry and, in fact, by this committee that um, that organizational relationship did not fully reflect the transformational nature of NextGen. It's more than developing a computer system. It is also how procedures get certified. It is how we integrate procedures into airports. It involves the full scope of all aspects of the FAA. And there are interagency components. Uh, you and others have touched on the importance of relationships with the Department of Defense, with NASA, and a host of other external stakeholders. What we have done as part of our restructuring is to, uh, is to elevate the NextGen program office into a new assistant administrator for NextGen that reports directly to me. And I'm pleased to be joined by my colleague, Vicki Cox, who is the, associated, uh, the assistant administrator for NextGen. And she has broader agency-wide responsibility that we think will be very effective in leveraging the full resource of the FAA against this agency-wide transformation. That's the first thing. The second thing is program management. Um, under our old structure, new programs, such as ERAM, were housed within the operating unit that they were ultimately going to support. So in the case of ERAM, it was housed in our en route uh, organization within air traffic. The en route organization is fundamentally an operating organization, and it's very difficult to ensure 
con consistency across all programs if they are managed by distinct operational units in the FAA. And the second thing is operating units are consumed with operations. Deployment of a new program is a long-term management program that must be kept on track. And we felt it was important to elevate the profile of the programs to give them dedicated oversight and ensure that they are appropriately linked to the operation to keep them on track. And so the two elements were elevating the next-gen program itself and then creating within the ATO a program management office to oversee large technology development programs. Okay. Once again, uh, thank you and your team for what you are doing. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boswell.